Hey everyone, welcome to the studio. Now today I'm going to show you how I made two different Nazgul style swords. Now these are made using traditional techniques, no 3D printing, no nothing. These are made of wood, resin, milliput, paint, all that kind of traditional hard graft stuff. And I'm going to show you how I did it. So let's go. So first things first is I needed some wood for the main body of the swords. So first I went to the store to have a look to see what kind of prices they were looking at. And of course you can get your wood from here. Then my dad let me know that he had a crap ton. So I went and had my pick here and there was some lovely hardwood which I ended up using for the swords. Now a couple of years ago Punish Props Academy made Nazgul swords out of wood and for that they made a really fantastic pattern for one of the swords. So I am using that pattern as a base. I drew out the swords and then these were rough cut to shape on a table saw. Now the majority of the shaping of this is going to be done on a benchtop belt sander. Now for the most part this is how you actually make a real sword out of metal. It's just much faster and easier making it out of wood. I went in and did all the profile, make sure the outline and shapes were correct. And then I went in and did all the bevels. All I did was a simple bevel on these, beveling from the center of the blade to the outside. Once I was at this stage, I gave them a quick coat of primer just to see where I was at. Next, I did a couple of coats of UV resin. Now, if you're a crafter and you haven't had a play with UV resin, I highly recommend it. It's the same kind of stuff you get in resin printers, thereabouts. But basically, yeah, it will cure in ultraviolet light. That is sunlight, or you can get UV torches if you need to do it inside. But a sunny day is really good. And you can see I had a real nice sunny day here. So I did a couple of coats of UV resin just to seal the outside of the wood, get rid of all the grain along with that primer, but then also to add some texture. Now I wanted these blades to be old and pitted. So I used a sponge brush and when the UV resin was tacky, I gave it a little dab and then it would cure with that texture on which as you can see looks really great and it will really pop when we come to do the final paint job. But that was mostly it for the blades, they were ready to go so now it's time to address the rest of the sword. For the cross guard I made this out of wire. You can see I twisted some wire to shape. They both have a slightly different shape, one is a straight cross guard, one is a curved cross guard but the wire I was able to pop the wire on, shape it to how I wanted to. I then covered the wire again in that UV resin. It's it's very versatile, I love it. Um, but I used the UV resin to give that cross guard some body that was solid. I also glued them to the swords at this point um, so that they were stable and they could work and they're actually really solid. That UV resin mixed with the wire and super glue to glue them in place is really, really solid. And yeah, they're not gonna break. It's not gonna break under stress very easily. Now for the majority of the shape work on this, I used milliput. Milliput is a two-part epoxy. You can get a few different types of two-part epoxy, but basically as an A and a B side in a putty form, you mix it together and then it will cure. Usually I leave them overnight to cure and they're fine. But with this, you're able to sculpt like clay and it will go off really, really hard, rock hard. It's a chemical reaction, so it goes really hard. But I was able to sculpt in all the different hilt details. Now on the wider blade there is a thing called a finger ring. Now this is to allow you to place your finger above the guard through the ring. Uh, it'll be protected but also it gives you a different grip on the sword. So I used a force a bit to drill the hole to the right size and then I actually used a key ring key off of my keychain. I was like I need something round and metal just to base this on and I just nabbed a spare ring off of my key ring. I then sculpted around this to make it look like it was part of the blade and forged that way. At this point I started to want to true up the, the guards a little bit because they were wire and kind of handmade sculpted onto the swords. They weren't as straight as I would like so I went in using the belt sander and different passes of the milliput to straighten up that cross guard, refine the shape, get it looking more like, uh, like an elegant tool rather than something that was made out of clay. So you can see in points I even sanded back down to the, the metal there. Um, but yeah, it was just refining, straightening up and getting that guard to how I wanted it to look. 
Now I wanted the pommel to have a bit of weight, so I used a brass finial, which also had a screw thread on the end, which allowed me to screw it in the end. I added a, a thread in the end to allow me to remove it like that, but I added the brass weight and that really improved the balance of the sword. With most swords, you want the balance to be just in front of the, the, the cross guard. So I used this in the pommel to add that weight and then I sculpted on top of it. I added wood to the handle to give it some body and then sculpted the rest using milliput. This again was refined on the belt sander to be nice and round. I sculpted the pommel and the handle together just so that they fit together really nicely. And then they got a coat of UV resin just to solidify that all together and give it a nice finish. It was time to add the spikes to the handle. Now the Nazgul things are really spiky, but I didn't want these spikes to be made of metal, you know what I mean, or like dangerous for a con. So I made them out of PVC. Now this is a a, an extruded plastic used for signs usually. It can go under Fomex, Sintra, but it's nice and soft. It's kind of a mix between plastic and foam board. So it's easy to cut with a knife. I used about a five mil thick one to make these little spikes and add them to the cross guard. These were again covered in UV resin just to tie them into the hilt and also to solidify them a little bit. The swords were now ready for paint. I did a primer layer and then the first layer on there was a gloss black. This is a great underlayer for anything metallic. I then went over with a Rust-Oleum Chrome. Not the best kind of looking Chrome, but I wanted to get them to a silver color just as a base. If you want to see this kind of painting in more detail, do check out my previous video on painting Nazgul Morgul daggers. That shows a bit more experimenting in how I refined this kind of paint job. I used my airbrush and just a stand of black. I went all over the blade to give it this kind of mottled feel. It really works well if you do multiple passes and then sort of you can even wipe and dab between passes and then this is when this texture that we put on earlier really starts to show up so you can wipe away and it'll take it away from all those little high points and it starts giving us a really good base to work with. I then mixed up a muddy brown to do a wash with. This is just a couple of different browns and a black just to give a really kind of horrible, dirty kind of feel. But I wanted this to be nice and thin and I applied it with a brush and then was just able to use a hairdryer to dry it really quickly, get it to flash off so we can do lots of coats really quickly getting color on there. This kind of paint job's all about layers. You have to add many, many different layers to add that history. If it's meant to look old, you've got to add that history in layers like it would have been added. After that brown, I went in with a thick metallic black. This was a, a heavy body acrylic paint, so you can really add texture. I use the sponge brushes again to help add more texture into the blade. And this again was mixed with washes of brown in between, just to keep adding those layers of color. The final thing to do was add a layer using the Molto Liquid Chrome. This is, in my opinion, as far as I've discovered so far, the best chrome effect paint that you can get. I used it on these swords just to add edge highlights and wear where it would be held. Yeah, it really helps to highlight that edge and make that edge look sharp, even though it is really, really blunt. Adding this on the edge can really help sell that it is, in fact, a sharp sword. The final thing to do with the sword with the fingering was to paint the handle. Now in the reference, it is like a, a stone marble kind of look. So I wanted to give that a go. So I used my airbrush. Um, it, marbling is very difficult. I tried using a few different techniques that I've seen online, but the best and quickest I found was to do spots of different colors. So I did different blue grays in different spots and then used a black to trace really fine uh, squiggly lines on it then went over again adding spots over that to blend those in a couple of different times and it ended up with a fairly convincing marble effect on the other side which i unfortunately didn't film i used armature wire to add grips onto the handle section and then covered in leather but that's how i made my two nazgul swords so let's see those glamour shots
And there we go, guys. That is the two swords. I am really happy with how they turned out. They, they look fantastic. They are con safe because they're blunt and they're not metal. Um, yeah, I can't wait to use these. These are part of a Nazgul cosplay that I'm doing with someone else. So we will have two Nazguls needing two swords. So that's these two all done. I'm so pleased with how they turned out. They look great. They're gonna look great with the costumes once we get those done. Oh, I just love how they look. If you are inspired to make one, do tag me over on Instagram, uh, buckethead.studios. I'd love to see them if you follow along in some way to make your own, that would be great. I do hope you had fun watching and of course, I will see everyone in the next video. And until then, take care, bye-bye.